So today we're going to be looking at a new product from Maverick RC and this is the Quantum Plus XT Flux. This is a bigger, beefier version than the original Quantum so we're going to be taking this guy out of the box, looking at it in some detail and I'm even going to be putting it side by side with the original Quantum so you can see the size differences and what they've actually changed on these cars. And just like that, everything is out of the box. And this is all you get when you unbox one of these. You get the car itself, which is of course fully assembled and ready to go. You get the radio and you get a very basic instruction manual and a couple other bits in here, which we'll go through right now. First thing in my hand here is the heat sink. You actually clip this over the motor. This is to help dissipate heat for those of you that don't know that. Uh, I think they leave it off because it may only be necessary for running 3S. That's my theory, I don't know if that's fact, uh, but I'll clip it on regardless. So I'm gonna be putting this on uh, and making sure that the uh, motor doesn't get too hot there. They also give you an antenna tube. Uh, you can actually cut this down a little bit if you want to, but this you need, actually need to install yourself just so that the uh, actual receiver antenna doesn't get damaged. So it only takes, honestly, it takes about a minute to install this. So uh, please install that because I've seen a lot of people who haven't done that. Uh, and then of course you have the uh, instruction manual, which is, more of a quick start guide and actually says so there at the top. So the manual you'll actually find online and I'll put a link in the video description for the Maverick website where you can check out all of their products and uh, if you have a car from Maverick that you need to you know, lo locate a part number or something like that, uh, check out their website, all the information is there. But this basically just talks about how to set up your radio, what all the knobs and switches do and how to charge batteries, um, you know, that type of stuff, maintenance schedules, that sort of thing. It's a quick start guide. There's Fairly basic information in here, but it's enough for anybody that hasn't had an RC to sort of get a bit of a gist of what it's all about. Now, the radio itself, same as all the other Maverick cars as far as I'm aware. Uh, four double A's, drop down wheel with the foam surround, which actually feels quite good. Uh, the trigger's actually got a bit of weight to it, which I don't mind at all. I prefer a little bit of a weighted trigger. Uh, you've got a steering jewel right here. Uh, steering trim, throttle trim back here, on and off switch on the back, and then underneath you got your reverse switches, uh, speed limiter knobs or EPA, so this is for your uh, forward speed limiting and reverse speed limiting on this side, and a bind button which you technically don't really need to use right out of the box, unless of course something happens to your receiver later on and you need to rebind to it, uh, that's when you use that. But other than that, not a bad radio. Uh, kind of funky looking, but it works, and the one that I've been using with the standard Quantum has been working fine so far, so I don't really see a need to uh, replace that at the moment. So, the Maverick Quantum Plus. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the looks a little bit. I really like what uh, Maverick have done here. I like the color scheme. These are actually available in two colors. There's also a bluish grayish one, uh, which comes with black wheels. But these kind of like look like a burgundy. They're not like bright red. So they're kind of like a burgundy sort of color. I like the color of these. If it was a bright red, I think it would have put me off. But the fact that they're like a dark red burgundy sort of color, I really like that. I, I don't think it looks bad at all. Um, I think they did a really good job with the styling. The body, I think, may actually be maybe PVC. Um, but, you know, just the same as the uh, standard Quantum. Uh, the tires themselves actually don't look that bad at all. Um, the tread's kind of unique, uh, but it does look chunky enough and there's enough angles and stuff like that that I think on the gravel track where I run, this actually might hook up okay. So, fingers crossed it does well. Uh, we'll soon find out. The spoiler in the back is exactly the same as the original Quantum, and the front and rear bumpers are actually exactly the same as well. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty confident the only thing that's changed on these cars is the wheel and tire offset um, and what's happening between the rear and front shock towers because the front and rear ends of this look identical to the standard Quantum. So uh, let's take the body off and let's have a look inside because I know that's all we, wa we all want to see. I'll quickly get rid of these body pins and the body itself as you can see it's just screen printed so uh, it's not bad I mean it's a little bit thin but uh, we'll see hopefully it'll hold up okay uh, you never know your luck so there we have it that's what it looks like and again I'll give you guys some side-by-side -side comparisons with the uh, standard quantum so you can actually see some of the differences 
and everything just sort of changed on this car because on the standard Quantum, the motor is actually facing towards the back. There's no diff or slipper clutch back there. Um, yeah, there's no slipper clutch. I was just thinking for a second if there was, a, but there isn't a slipper clutch. Uh, now they've flipped the motor around. We have a center diff. The motor is different. The ESC is different. So it's a, it's a completely different car. The chassis itself, as you can see, it's completely flat underneath. With the original Quantum, you have that sort of like kink. It's kind of like a raised higher center of gravity type chassis. Uh, but this is all nice and flush. Looks really, really good. So uh, hopefully this will uh, hang on and, and will last. Uh, the, as I said, the front and rear is the same. So the arms are the same and everything like that is the same. It does not come with the wheelie bar on the back. But if you have a look, there's actually holes here where you can actually mount the wheelie bar. So if you really want to get one, uh, you can actually buy the wheelie bar separately and then attach it on here. There's no problem in doing that. I've already sussed that out, so you can do that. Uh, steering servo is at the, on the side here, laying down flat. The only thing that I think Maverick need to do is drill a little hole on the side of the chassis here, just so we can access the servo horn. So if we ever need to change that out, we don't have to disassemble the servo. Like there's two holes underneath, which is not... You know, it's not a big job. It's not like you gotta take the half the car apart, but it would have been nice if they just drill a little hole in the side here just to access that servo horn. Um, especially since I'm probably gonna be taking it out and putting some Loctite. I'll do double check all of this before I actually run the car and give you guys some feedback uh, later on, uh, probably during the running video if I find anything that's a bit out of whack. So um, the front and rear, as I said, is, is exactly the same. So there's nothing new here. Pil pillow ball suspension, CVDs in the front, standard dog bones in the rear. Um, the suspension itself, I think Maverick have maybe been watching my videos um, and they've been listening because the suspension actually doesn't feel that bad. Um, it, uh, I don't really have an opinion at this stage. I think it feels a lot better than the original Quantum that I had did. Um, so I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna see how it performs and if it needs a tune, we'll go from there. Um, usually when you run in the suspension a bit and you know it has a few jumps, things soften out a little bit. So we'll see how that, how that works out. Uh, receiver box is the same as the original Quantum as far as I know, I don't think that's changed. But then everything else here has changed. We got a, a, a nylon spur gear, which should help keep uh, you know the, the noise level down a little bit. It does come with a Dean's connector or a T-style type of connector. Um, as you guys know, I run XT60s, so I'll be swapping that out to an XT60 uh, for all my 2S and 3S batteries. Um, and then this is something that I really, I'm actually quite surprised to see this, but at the same time, so happy, so happy that this exists. And that is a push button on the ESC, not a sliding switch. Thank you so much, Maverick and HBI, for putting a push button on these ESCs and Hobby Wing, of course. Um, so yeah, really happy to see that because uh, that's one less thing I'm, I know that I'm going. I'm not definitely not going to be frustrated with is uh, having the the thing turn off on me every time I jump. Now the motor itself is a 3665 3100 kV and it's running what looks to be like a 13 or 14 tooth pinion. I, I will count that up and put it up on screen. I don't know exactly what size that is, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Um, I briefly ran one of these on 2S earlier today at the shop. And even on 2S, this thing has got a lot of power. So on 3S, this thing's gonna be an animal. It's gonna be a bullet. So uh, really looking forward to it. I'm also noticing is this right? Oh my God, they did too. I've just noticed they've put a little bit of foam on the base of the body posts. This may mean absolutely nothing to a lot of you out there, but I love that because that kind of softens the, the or protects the body from getting scratched up. Um, I kind of wish that they, if they were gonna do that, they would have given us a slightly larger base because this, you know, with a big enough hit, if you land upside down, you can still push the body posts through the body. So a slightly wider base there on the body post would have been nice to see, but I love the fact that they've actually got foam on there. I didn't notice if the original one came with that. Oh no, it does too. I'm looking at it just off camera and it does have that foam on there. I didn't even notice that before. Um, so adjustable uh, toe links on the front, just as the original Quantum. Uh, we have a split drive shaft system, of course, because we have the center diff, a nice sliding motor mount. So this motor mount means that it's going to be very easy. Sorry, I'll get the antenna out of the way. Uh, this motor mount means that it's going to be very easy to adjust 
uh, gear mesh as well. Uh, it's not like the old sort of traditional gear, uh, motor mounts where you have to undo the motor and then slide the motor inside the motor mount. So the fact that they've done this on top straight from the get-go, that is a big plus. Um, so really nice to see that one. And um, yeah, I mean, we have Velcro straps on the battery tray, same as the original one. Uh, they've got now front and rear chassis braces, which was obviously different. And uh, that pretty much sums everything up. There's really not a lot here that you haven't seen other than what's in between the front and rear shock towers. And uh, that's what our uh, Quantum Plus looks like. So they are a little bit longer uh, and they are a little bit wider as well. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this thing's going to perform and how it's going to handle that 3100 kV motor, 3665 I'm hoping. Judging by the small run that I did this morning uh, with uh, just a 2S battery, uh, I think that this is actually going to perform exceptionally well as far as speed goes. Um, I'm just hoping that we don't have any issues with this guy with the axles or the um, uh, A-arms braking and things like that. So. My original Quantum did survive the 2S and 3S bash at the BMX track, and it did quite well. So um, I've got high hopes for this. I think this is going to be really good. Um, and uh, yeah, if Maverick keep pumping out cars like this and uh, you know giving us good product and they continue to make improvements on these things, I think these are going to be really strong competitors at this price point because these are going to retail here in Australia for about $499, so just shy of $500. Bucks. Um, and at that price point, for a 3S car that's going to be this big, if it can hold up to some durability, uh, Maverick are really going to have a strong winner here. There's going to be a lot of tough competition uh, coming from them. So that's all I've got for this one. If you have any further questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new as always and check out the video description. I'll have links in there to the Maverick website where you can get one of these here in Australia and of course links to my socials as well if you want to follow me on there. That's it from me. Thank you again for watching and I'll be speaking to you all next time.